All right then, now that we have a transmitter ready to use, we can get back to the main body of the quadcopter and start putting the rest of the stuff on. So on this top plate here, I'm going to have obviously another radio module to receive the signals from the transmitter. And that's going to be connected to an Arduino Pro Mini in pretty much exactly the same way that we have in the transmitter. And this one is going to read in the radio information and it's going to output a PPM, that's Pulse Position Modulation Signal, to the flight controller. <clears throat> so that's going to receive that flight controller, uh, the PPM signal here. Now you might be thinking, well, wasn't this an Arduino already? Can't we just connect the radio directly to that? And the answer is yes, we can. Um, there's a few reasons that I'm not going to do that for this build. I might come back to it and try it later though, because it's a, an idea that kind of takes my interest. Um, the main reason is that this board is already very, very busy doing the flight controlling. And we're really kind of pushing the limits of what this little 8-bit chip can do. And there's also a, a limited number of pins that we can use on there. So to connect the radio module to here directly, we would have to either mess around with the motor pins, which I don't want to do, and we'd have to use software SPI, which I tried, and it, it seems to work okay, um, but it's much lower performance, and we would have to mess around with the multi-Wii source code quite a bit, and I don't really want to do that. Um, but like I say, I might try it again later, because... The advantage that you would get from this arrangement is that instead of just the, I think, eight channels or so that you can get with PPM, uh, you could get a lot of channels. Um, technically, you could get up to about 32 channels of um, analog data being sent in that kind of an arrangement. Um, so PPM is nice in that it's very portable. So we, we will be able to take the PPM signal that comes out of here and instead of this flight controller we could just connect it to say, well I've been using CC3D flight controller, um, works great. Uh, I have another 32 flight controller that I haven't tried yet, but I'm expecting that should work okay. <coughs> um, and you can actually get these two boards if you put them together carefully. You can get them into quite a little compact little arrangement. So this is what I've been using on my other quadcopter so far with the CC3D flight controller. And like I say, it's quite portable. So I could just pull this off my other quadcopter that uses CC3D and I can just plug it straight into here and it's ready to go. So that's quite an advantage, uh, and that's why I wanted to go with this arrangement of having an, another Arduino on board as well. Plus, um, since we have another Arduino here, <coughs> we could get this to do other things like maybe want to turn some lights off and on, or uh, make a buzzer, or something like that. We can we have a little bit of extra processing power. We can do other interesting things with. So that's my my reasoning for going with this um, layout. And I haven't really explained how all this fits together on here so far. I've kind of mostly just glossed over what I've been doing with these um, connections in here and where the ESCs go and stuff. But I made a little um, diagram so that we can have a look at how that all works. So let's see what's going on with the circuitry on the quadcopter. So we have a battery and we want to use that to spin some motors. I'm just going to show one here and the battery is giving us uh, somewhere between 7.4 and 11.1 .1, roughly thereabouts um, volts and we want to use a flight controller to intelligently spin the motors at different rates depending on uh, what we're trying to do with the quadcopter. 
Now the problem is that the flight controller here is running at 5 volts and it has some sensitive electronics in there so we can't use that to directly output power to the motors with high current and such. So we use the speed controllers to do that. So they take a low voltage signal from the white wire here and when we give the ESC some power they take power directly from the, the main power um, then they'll use that low power signal to control the output to the motor and make it spin at the right speed. <coughs> so let's put that on here that uh, as I said is the white wire and that's going to be coming from one of our uh, pulse width modulation pins so that's 3, 9, 10 and 11 as we saw in the multi-wee motor layout diagram before uh, and that's the white wire on the speed controllers uh, depending on what kind of speed controllers you have they may not be white I have a few that are orange uh, but definitely not the black and red because <coughs> uh, the flight controller needs some power and as noted earlier it's using 5 volts so we can't just connect that directly to our main battery power there but fortunately this is a very common requirement so a lot of speed controllers have a power step down converter inside them so we can take the black and the red from there and we can connect those up to anywhere along here but the way the ESC plugs are made it's most convenient to connect them in a row like this so there'll be the three pins there on say D11 there by the looks of it and that's how we can power the flight controller board now of course we have some other motors and I'll just put those down here as small ones and they of course need to be connected to the main battery in the same way and they also need to have their signals connected to the flight controller so that they can be controlled so I'll put the signal connections in there like that now these ones do not need to also have the 5 volt power coming into the flight controller uh, in fact if we connect that up it'll cause problems so we only want one of the ESC's to be having these um, 5 volt incoming power connections there so we'll have to actually um, remove the wires from the ESC plugs for the other three ESC's. Next thing we need is the Arduino to receive the radio signals and this Arduino of course needs to be powered as well. Um, this is going to have to be a 3.3 volt Arduino so that means we can power it with somewhere between 3.3 and 12 volts and we have 5 volts here so we can take that like this and make sure that the positive is going into the raw pin here not the VCC pin again uh, so that gives us power and then we need only one wire between these two for the PPM connection it's kind of convenient like that and it can be any <coughs> digital pin there except for these ones down here pins 11, 12 and 13 need to be used for the connection to the radio module so we can't use those but we can put it anywhere else and I've decided to put it onto pin 2 like this because pins 0 and 1 are the RX and TX pins used for serial so it's good to not to bother not to uh, use those if you don't need to and um, it's also pin 2 on the flight controller as well here so I just thought I'd keep them the same and <laughs> once again it would be nice if that's all there was to it but we have this bunch of wires extra that we need to do between the Arduino and the radio module so I'll just clear off some of the stuff here and it's the same stuff we had before with the transmitter so we have the radio module there and we need to give it power from the 3.3 volt uh, VCC output of the Arduino that, so that's regulated power nice sp st smooth stable power and again we need to have the same connections that we had on the transmitter hmm did you get all that? 
Okay, so the way I'm going to stick these on here is basically the same way as I did for the transmitter, that is to use some of this uh, double-sided sticky foam tape that I found at the dollar shop and stick each of these boards directly onto the plywood. And I've soldered on, well these were soldered already, but for the Pro Mini I've turned all the pin headers facing upwards on this side so I can use these female to female jumper wires to connect everything. And also on the radio chip um, you may notice that when you buy these the pins are facing downwards but I've removed them and put some new pins on facing upwards. That just makes it a little bit easier to stick it on. Okay now I have uh, the board stuck on there. You can see there's getting a bit of a clutter of wires there. This is not really a good long-term solution but um, I'm just doing this because it's easy to plug everything in for now and get it running and I'll, I'll do something better later. Um, but uh, what I wanted to point out at this point was that there's a little white arrow at the top of the um, flight controller board and that needs to be facing forwards for your flight direction. Um, ideally this board would be exactly in the middle right between all the four motors uh, but for the way I have my like Arduino and everything I just found it a little bit more convenient to offset it to the side so I can plug in my FTDI connector here and the other one here and just the way the wires are laid out it was a bit more convenient. Uh, you don't really want to have it too far away from the center because the um, flight stabilization will get a little bit strange but just a little bit off um, probably shouldn't affect things too much. Now I've connected the speed controller wires as well on here, just there, so these are the white. Uh, I actually cut the black and red wires from three of the ESCs because as I mentioned I don't need them and I just wanted to cut down on the number of extraneous wires and keep things a bit tidy. So I have three ESCs that only have a single wire coming in and we can see those on pins 3, 9, and 10 there, like that, maybe if we can see that, oh look at that, it focuses, so that's pins 3, 9, and 10, and then on pin 11 there, I have the white signal wire, and then I also have the black and the red 5 volts coming in from this ESC here. So as I mentioned before you only need to do that from one ESC. So if you don't want to cut any of these wires this is what the ESC will be like when you first get it. There will be a um, 5 volt lead coming out like this with three connections. Uh, so you can use that for the one that requires power, just the single ESC, and then for the other three you're going to have to take the red one out of here. And that's actually pretty easy to do, you'll need to separate these a little bit. Um, I'm going to do it on this one here just to show you rather than that one. So let me just uh, stand up. So you can see here that there's just a little bit of metal tab inside that slides there and it's held in place by the little tiny tab of plastic on top of it. So to get it out, first you need to push the wires forwards like that and then try and hold them there and then get a very small screwdriver or a craft knife and lift that plastic tab up just a little bit and then you should find that wow this is really hard to do on camera 
Let me look at it directly. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I've got managed to get the knife underneath that little plastic tab, and now we can just slide that pin straight out. So then, um, like I say, they just sort of get in the way after that, so that's why I cut them off. Um, and also, once you've got it down to just the one signal wire, if you have any of these single ones like this, you can use these to uh, replace. So that's what I've done with my setup there. I've put my signal wire onto its own single piece here like that. Not really necessary, but uh, I just find that it keeps things tidy to do it like that. And now we're pretty much done with the all the connections and the physical setup and that. Uh, still have to put the software in there, of course. I'll just check. You might want to just check that uh, things are working, like the both of your Arduinos are getting power correctly and stuff. Uh, I just have the Blink program on both of these at the moment, so you can see there's just the uh, two LEDs blinking perfectly in time because they started up perfectly in time. One was powering the other, so if they were not perfectly in time, something would be a bit strange. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, only other thing to do is, of course, tie down these wires, get them a little bit more out of the way. You want to have them at least tightly enough in here so that they're not going to be hit by that or the other ones.